I believe it'll just be a really a blessed, a po- po- you know, sometimes if you just hit the nail on the head, it doesn't take too many swings, right? And so uh, have you ever been around that where you, you know, maybe you're teaching your son to swing a hammer or maybe you're the one swinging the hammer and then somebody like Jack Montgomery or whatever shows up with their hammer and they're like, wham, wham. And you're like, man, I, you know, that's all right. It's a little embarrassing, but um, just hitting the right spot. Have you ever seen in, the, in maybe in the movies where uh, there's a guy in a noose and uh, he's about to be hung? And there's this guy that's like maybe snuck up on the top of the roof. And he, what does he do? Like he, he, he's the buddy of the guy that's about to be hung. It might be Robin Hood, you know, like Robin Hood, he's, he's the guy. And the, these guys are, they, they stole some bread to feed their families, are about to be hung. And Robin Hood, what does he do with his arrow? He takes aim, doesn't he? And he takes aim and he doesn't just hit just anywhere. He hits like the one spot, the only spot. <clears throat> that could really make the impact to set that person free. And so it's important that we know how to take aim. Isn't that right? Like, like if, if you miss the spot or if you just decide that, even if you're loaded, if you pull the trigger, if you're not aiming at the right spot, it, it doesn't make the impact. I mean, we could do this with, excuse me. Get my gum in my mouth. All right. We could do this with uh, so many different things, but we're going to talk about just taking aim tonight. It seemed um, just as as the last couple days, especially, um, I've been just thinking about the Lord's in having me uh, going over this word aim. And the Bible tells us, that, this is 1 Corinthians 9, 26, that we don't, we don't fight. Um, we don't run our race. We don't, we don't enter the contest as one that beats the air, one that's aimless, right? And because there's a lot of effort with little progress, this is what he's saying. Like, we, we don't run. We don't fight. We don't. And so it's really, it's important that if you and I are wrestling, like, so you could take this, this same passage in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, that talks about running. I don't run like someone, I, I, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. This picture of knowing what you're hitting or knowing, you know, which way you're supposed to be going so that there's progress, Right. And I think sometimes the enemy would love to wear us down. Wear us down by doing things, uh, just getting us tired going and doing everything um, or trying so many different things, but maybe not really seeing the the progress. I think we can grow weary even in doing good, um, uh, especially if we don't really know what we're doing. I remember this uh, this story about Brother Hagen um, at the end of uh, this was like in Pentecostal church uh, assemblies of God Pentecost early you know early fifties um, they come at, at the end of the the message they would always open the altar up for prayer and so there would be thirty minutes of prayer and <clears throat> there there would be travailing and there would be you know just all kinds of you know you never know people praying for their marriage people well this one lady she was travailing and he comes up and puts his hand on his shoulder and he said asked her, he said, what are you, what are you, um, man, what are you praying for? And she, she said, I don't know. Like, uh, not, not, not he said, well, how are you going to know if you get it? Right. That's kind of like the scripture, isn't it? Sometimes we're praying prayers that we don't, they're not specific enough. And we've been talking about this the last couple of weeks about how, uh, <clears throat> um, how idle talk can get into our hearts. And we, we are talking about how idle talk is not just without a point, but it really is to alter our affections or to change our affections. So it might be talk that leads me to really liking this and then maybe pull me, maybe it could be pulling me away from uh, a spouse. It could be pulling me away from the plans of God for my life. God's, God wants me to be doing this, but all of a sudden I picked up this new hobby. And so now I'm more, uh, my mind is more reeling on that than even where God called me to this workplace and, and, and this, this one family, the Lord laid it on my heart now. And, and I even went and bought him this thing and was going to give it to him, but there it lays on the shelf you know, two, six, eight months later, because I picked up this new hobby and all the things of God just kind of, so I just sidetracked, right? So idle talk is not just, is, it, it has a purpose and that is to alter or it wars against the affections of our heart, it pulls us away. And so that's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. Proverbs chapter four, 23. So, and so I just think this is uh, important. Well, cause this will make sense after we get to the end here. Um, have you ever n- noticed, um, people that have, seems like their paths are broken. 
you know, paths like their life. It seems to be they just leave brokenness in their path, in their path. Like wherever they go, brokenness in their path. It's because their hearts are broken. You maybe have heard this hurt people, hurt people. <clears throat> um, but so you think about that. Uh, and so we're going to get to this. But have you ever been hurt by somebody? It might be because they're hurt. Okay. Uh, let's keep going here. So <clears throat> um, let me see. I'm going to open up some notes. I don't even have my notes yet. So uh, real quick. Uh, untitled document. That's it. Well, I put, I couldn't figure out how to title it on something else. So. All right. <clears throat> so let's just uh, aim. We're going to talk, we're going to talk tonight about taking aim um, and taking aim in our prayers. It's what we're going to talk about because we know that the Bible tells us to guard your heart in Proverbs chapter 4, but how you guard your heart, we looked, we looked at this the last couple of Sundays in Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 7, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and petition, specific felt need. This is, this is the aim, the petition, specific felt need with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God or the quietness, the rest, the wholeness, the join together with God which passes all understanding and will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I don't remember who, who it was that was talking about this recently, but it would be as if um, God put you in his pocket. Who was that? Who? Oh, okay. This was at, at Champions for Christ, our youth camp. It would be as if God put you in his inside coat pocket, like if you had a coat, and, and even though there's all this war going around, he takes you and he picks you up in, from the midst of the storm and he takes you up and he joins you as close as he can right inside, you know, right here. And even though there's a storm going on, it's be, you have a peace because you're with somebody that's greater than the storm. So this is what's so cool about prayer. It, gu- it guards your heart. And it, and it says this, it says, and the peace which passes understanding will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. If you don't have peace, your heart, it, it, it's proof that your heart is not guarded. Your heart, the storm's in you. Yeah, right. Okay. <clears throat> and so, um, peace is, is huge for guard heart. So we've been talking about this and I wanted to, uh, uh, talk about what could guard our prayers. Uh, cause I want to talk about taking aims at prayers and I, it seems to be, um, being specific about, our prayers, and so I want to just talk about the love of God, because I, I think that both of these pieces, both on, and it really starts with how much you're loved. All of it comes from this one place of how much you're loved, and so Ephesians chapter three. This was actually some of our homework this week from Sunday. Ephesians three seventeen through twenty one. This is a prayer that Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus. He said, "So that the Christ, I pray that Christ would dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you would be um, that you being rooted and grounded in love may able." may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. This is the BSB I was reading out of. So he tells us he's praying that they would know how much they're loved. So, can I say this? That God loving you the way he does is not just for you. Because he wants to love you in such a way that, my goodness, you it, from that place of him loving you, it overflows in your love towards others. Because he loved you in a way where he was patient and he was kind and he didn't count this and count this and count this. His, the way he loves you isn't just for you. It's because God wants to use you to love through. And so <clears throat> a couple things, both well, it seems like the, the predominantly where our cares and anxieties come from is where we don't have a firm grip on how much God loves us. And so a bad report, we are not filled with peace. We're filled with the storm. But if we would remember how much he loves us, then guess what? He, because he loves us, right? Because he loves us, just like as, as a, a, you as a father, but God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask, think, or even hope. So God's not limited like you are as a father or mother are. Thank you. And his love is greater than yours as a father and mother is for your children. So if we know how much he loves us, then even amidst the storm, you know, you, you know, like the disciples question uh, Jesus, do you not love us when they were in the storm? It's when, 
that's when we're in the storm, that's the place where we question a lot of times is, do you love us? But the other place um, <clears throat> that oftentimes the storms are is not just uh, things that are happening to us. It's, it's, it's what's, who's happening to us, other people. And we forget how much God loves us. And so it's hard for us to love them. You know, how much you've been forgiven, so it's hard to, to forgive them the way that you could or should. You forgot that you missed it and missed it, and you came back to the Lord with tears and, and a repentant heart. Not, tears don't signify repentance, but you came back with a tender heart and said, God, forgive me, forgive me. Yet that was like the 600th time. <clears throat> okay? And God said, what sin? As far as the east is from the west, the blood of Jesus. And wow, okay, wow. <laughs> tears, you know, like, thank you, Lord. But this person, so both places, if I know the love of God, if I know the love of God, how much he's loved me and how much he loves me, then, um, then I'm not, I'm not con so concerned about all the things. So anyway, he goes on to say, and this is what he wanted us to pray, pray that we love. And um, in, in John 15, 9, it says this, it says, the Father has loved me. So I have loved you. This is Jesus talking, John 15, 9. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. Now remain in my love. I want to take this next little five minutes. All this was just to say taking aim, taking aim and being specific, and take the next five minutes to pray for, for five people, but not just any five. The first ones that come to your, to your mind, great. Not yourself, okay, but five people. You ask the Lord who to pray for, but one of the five people, Luke 6, 27 through 28, um, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. Um, at least one of those five, let it be the last person you talked bad of or down about. Or has crossed your mind because they have been mistreating you or whatever it may be. And you pray for them. Specific. Take aim. Take aim to, and I'm not talking taking aim at them. <laughs> no, no. And you know, <clears throat> this is where Romans 8, 26, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit comes to our aid in our weakness when we don't know how to pray as we ought. There's a lot of, this is a tool that the, the Holy Spirit, our helper, our advocate, our strengthener, there's a lot of things that are going on in our life that have to do with our mouths more than it has to do with the case at hand. It's because we keep running our mouth about something and he's like, hey, you know, like grabbing your leg and you're like, what? and he's like, all right, just if you'll just talk about what I talk about, if you'll say what I say, if you'll, if you'll trust me, I'll take, I'll, I'll, I'll do a work here that you don't understand, Right. And so this is a huge, a huge uh, gift for you and I when we don't know how to pray as we ought. The Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit comes to our aid in our weakness with groanings and, and words too deep for utterance. This is talking about praying in the Spirit. And so this is a good place to start. If you can't pray uh, intelligibly with the love of God, and remember love is patient, which does not respond or refuses to respond with and from frustration. So we're going to take five. This is like we're going to do more in five minutes than maybe we have done in, in a long time. Uh, and I think there's going to be great advancement. There's going to be some nooses cut off of some people's necks, you know, and, and just different things like that. So um, and so what I wanted to do, it, because we're going to go have fun and all this kind of stuff. Um, and I really am going to set a five minute timer uh, to, to take five. And, and you're going to, right now, get your phone out, get your pen out, write your names down. It might be your kids. It might be whoever the Lord brings to your heart. Just trust the Holy Spirit to bring them to your heart. Lord, show me who I'm supposed to pray for. And this will not only be your assignment to take five today, but tomorrow, until Sunday. Until Sunday. That tomorrow morning when you wake up, when you got this five minutes, you're going to pray for them again. And then, then on Friday morning, and on Saturday morning, and on Sunday morning. And so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to take five, five people for five days, and we're going to see what God does, and we're not going to just pray vague prayers. What the Lord asks you to ask for, I want you to ask for it. Be specific. Take aim the same way you would hit that little spot, 
And if you don't know how to pray, because sometimes you, you don't and I don't, maybe tonight would be a great place to start was I don't know how to pray for these people. It's been a while. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to yield to the Holy Spirit and I'm going to pray in an unknown tongue for them because I'm going to pray a perfect prayer to where the Bible tells me that I, it help, he helps me pray. It builds myself up. Right. And I speak forth mysteries because some some of you that when I said the enemy, you said, heck no. But you need your inner man to take over this outer man. And so this is where you even start in that in that regard that you would pray in the spirit with them in mind, because if you're going to pray a perfect prayer, it's going to be good. Anyway. All right. So we're going to we're going to do it here. Um, Hopefully you have your notepad, your pen or your phone. And uh, we're going to get I'm going to give you we're going to set a six minute timer because it's 735 right now. We're going to set a six minute timer. So you got one minute to come up with your five names and then that's it. And so I, here I encourage you this. This is the uh, this is what I was going to say. Um, make your chair or make the come to the altar. Just just make it make it something more than just nonchalant. But just I really am coming and like you would make a petition and you would come to somebody uh, and you now you'd present your a petition before the Lord. And so make your chair an altar, make the come to the however you want to do it, but but do something a little like you're not just kind of like laid back, right? Casual. All right.
for using your people tonight. Thank you for using your people tomorrow to bring about your plans, your specific, your detailed plans for individuals. Father, I thank you for the grace to stand in the gap, to stand in that place for every person that you've brought to our hearts. And we bless them. We bless every person that was on our list. We bless them in the name of Jesus. We pray even now that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened and that they would know the hope to which they've been called. Father, fill, fill them tonight. Fill them today. Fill them as they go to sleep with the hope and the picture to which they've been called. That they would know that you are the one that's called them. You are the one that has designed them and you have a purpose for them. And your purpose, Father, let them know your purpose. Let them know the inheritance that you have for them. Let them know your power. Father, thank you for just light to every, on every situation. And darkness has to be dispelled, be gone in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. Amen, 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 amen. You know, I encourage you to set a timer on your own phone. It's amazing what, how much prayer can be done in even just one minute for somebody. It's amazing how much of your heart can be laid open, you know. Um, and, and I believe that if you'll just set a, set a reminder on your phone, uh, tomorrow morning we're going to take five. And then Friday morning we're going to take five. And then Saturday morning we're going to take five. And then Sunday we're going to take five. And I'm, I'm telling you what, we're going to begin to see God it's time we just be the church because this is what the church <clears throat> authority occupies and authority is exercised by the words of our mouth and so we're going to do that amen all right guys we're going to go get some snow cones hey this dismissed out the back door grab your kids and then um snow cones and there's